Hello and welcome to my video. It's um, about exploring sexuality within a monogamous relationship. My name is Priestess Vanessa. I call myself a professional tank drinker and that means I work with people in regards to creating a sacred space for them to explore sexuality and themselves and without shame, without judgment, reconnecting to their sex and their self and their body and the love for themselves and all that stuff. So yeah. Lots of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know where you're up to in regards to this video, if you're seeing this video from the series of videos or not, so I'm going to approach it as its own video, but I did have a whole heap of other videos, I'll link them here or in the description or somewhere, there'll be links somewhere. Uh, all the other videos I've done in regards to this topic, um, exploring sexuality within a monogamous relationship. Now, oh. Okay, I will say this before I go any further, because we're talking about sex in this one specifically. So you're exploring the actual sex and sexuality part in this one. If you have not seen my other, viewed my other videos, please do. I please ask you to, because I've gone over a lot of stuff that, in my opinion, is foundational. Foundational. You really need to explore it. So then you can get to this point, even at this video, and go, yeah, this is what I require and desire. Because this is this video is specifically for people who are in what I call an idealized monogamous relationship, where it's just you and the other person. There's no one else. There's no fluidity, no threesomes, no foursomes, no less sort of stuff. It's just you and the other person. Okay. Now we've established that, and you know where I'm coming from with this. So, all right, so it's just you and this other person. That's okay. That's okay? Yes, and. This is my thing. This is the boundary on this. Yes, and. It's not a codependent sort of relationship. That you're not coming from a place that this other person has to be everything for you. Because I don't want that other person to want you to be everything for them can't exist without you. Oh. That's where you've got to ask yourself, where is this actual relationship? And if it's good, it's good. That's where I'm hoping you're coming from and we'll continue from that point and that I'm hoping it is what I call a soulmate, not twin flame, not a roommate, not any of those sort of relationships, but a soulmate connection and soulmate relationship where you have good solid foundation of friendship but also an attraction there, sexual attraction with each other. Now, all right, so let's get into the sexuality part of it and exploring with each other. <sighs> this is the best part. <laughs> this is where you start exploring love languages. And you definitely have to explore love languages. So if you're looking for what I'm talking about there, it's called the five love languages. You can Google it, but also I'll put the link somewhere below for the quiz. I ask that you do the quiz. So then you guys, both as singles and then as a couple, so you have something to discuss. You can now know how to fulfill each other's needs in that way. Because everyone has a mixture of love languages. There's five love languages and everyone has a mixture of them. Some are more, in it. just like anything, it will be some are higher up than others, but we're all a mixture of all of them, okay? It's just some of us are higher up than others. My two are quality time and touch. Yours might be others. Yours might be one specific one, really high up there. But for me, quality time and touch are pretty potent and up there sort of thing. So then followed by that, it was um, words of affirmation, acts of service, and then gifts sort of thing. They're the five. Something else I would love for you to explore. Now, once again, put the link below or anywhere is what's called uh, JMR's Five Erotic Blueprints. And she has a quiz. Once again, she's got a quiz too. You can find out which is your erotic blueprint. Now, the five erotic blueprints are sensual, sexual, kink, energetic, and shapeshifter. Okay, and shapeshifter is the one that pretty much can be a little bit of any of them. can be one specifically or actually a couple and it'll be a mix. And can actually in one session, in one in one you know love making session or whatever you want to call this, can be all of them, or just one. It's like 
Yeah, that's okay. And even the shapeshifters, even the shapeshifters will find, yeah, they're one more than the others at times. Like for myself, yes, I am a shapeshifter, generally a shapeshifter. I am genuinely a shapeshifter. I've felt into this and I'm still exploring it with my uh, partners, but I'm generally feeling, yeah, I am shapeshifter. And even the other day when I was with Mr. B, I've got two partners, Mr. J and Mr. B at the moment. So yeah, I'm not monogamous, but that's got nothing to do with it. You can still learn from me. I, I can still got a lot to give you because I was monogamous with Mr. J. Um, yeah, and before I went exploring with Mr. Um, B. So anyway, Mr. B, um, he's helped me more explore my kink side. My kink side, oh yeah, and stuff. Whereas Mr. J, he's definitely my more sensual side, some sexual and a little bit of energetic. Yeah, whereas Mr. B is definitely more my kink um, will possibly be energetic too, and definitely sensual, a little sensual, and definitely sexual. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, they're, they're exploring different things with them. So I know because the other day, I was definitely my sexual. I was definitely with the se bleh, get the word <laughs> sexual blueprint the other day with Mr. B. I was like, just take me now, you know. <laughs> so it was just like. Fuck the foreplay, yeah, a little bit of kissing, whatever. Just fucking, here's my clothes off and let's fuck. <laughs> it's okay. You'll have a little laugh about that. It's okay. It's all beautiful. Sexuality is beautiful. So this is why the five erotic blueprints is really good because also your partner will then know, are you a shapeshifter? And if so, then he'll be able to kind of learn how to read you. And if you are being like I was the other day, it, are you being in your sexual? And so all you want is his clothes off, fuck me now. And, or is it a case you're more essential, so he needs to work on this? He needs to work on this in the environment. It, are you more into the kink? Dominate me, baby. Or to be dominated or to dominate. And then, of course, the sexual, sensual, dominate, um, kink, and energetic. Energetic is also about the tease. Is it a case that he needs to read you and be all like, hey babes, walk away, you know? <laughs> and walk away, you know, and tease you as such. And that, that's, but there's also other ways to work with the energetic blueprint. JMR goes into it a bit more. Um, but yeah, find out what blueprint you are, what your love languages are. These all intermix and intermingle and help with this next part, the sexuality part. So how to explore sexuality within a monogamous relationship? Pretty fucking easy. Explore those blueprints. Definitely explore the blueprints, even the ones that you're not. So if you're more sensual, start exploring the sexual a little bit. And then if, if you're more sexual, start exploring sensual or the kink or whatever. And then with your love languages, start exploring all those differently and stuff like that. Just good to explore ones that aren't, but also good to explore the ones you are. So for me, quality, time and touch. So touch is huge for me. So guess what? I have now learned about, because I'm a professional tantrika, duh, I do massage on people sometimes and I definitely do uh, linger massages because guys need this, um, believe me, I can go. It's a whole other video for that. If you're interested in it, close. Feel free to contact me. Uh, but at the same time, it's somewhere on my YouTube. Check my YouTube channel. Uh, but anyway, I, it's a case of touch for me is point. So there's what's called the five elements of touch. Now, I learned this from someone else. I learned this from a guy called E.L. Matatash. Matatash. I don't know his last name. I'm so bad with his last name. But E.L. E-Y-A-L. And I've learned this, the five elements of touch from him. Earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, or energetic. And so there's a lot of correlation. In my opinion, there's a lot of connection between that and, of course, the five erotic blueprints for me. A lot of correlation. Um, so anyway, with the five elements of touch, you can explore that. You can explore all the different sorts of touch. And the earth, I'll go briefly over it all. If you want more, you know, you can get in touch with him or I'll get in touch with me. And I'll go through it with a session with you on um, online or what have you. So earth is more like 
very like about the pauses and the solidness and the holding and even in in a way getting past and into yourself there and in in past the skin and in the joints so there's that you've got air which is light as a feather light as a feather light as a feather so it's very much on the just the hair side of the skin sort of thing playing with that sort of touch then you've got water which is about using the whole hand and the palm and being staying connected and constantly moving and doing all this sort of stuff. That's water and that's more skin to skin. Right? And then of course fire is slapping, pinching, and my favorite, scratching. That's fire touch. So fire you can really get into the what's called the fuchsia of the skin too. You can also just um, delve into that, what the different sorts of touches are, like the energetic is that, it's like you're going along here, um, then you've got the next layer which is the hair layer, and then you've got of course skin layer, then you've got the fuchsia, the fuchsia, uh, the, uh, fascia, or some people call it fascia layer, so getting into there like that, this cat can be actually quite painful because we can actually hold a lot of trauma in our body, just beware, be very aware. Touch can be very, very potent. And the other thing you can do is, of course, getting really deep in there and having the other person feel your joints and feel the other person's joints in them. That's how you explore sexuality is definitely through that and getting to know each other. Another way is through what's called connection practices. Uh, connection practice is simple as doing breathing exercises with each other, do anything that you feel it will form that connection. Uh, for me, I like to keep it simple. Uh, it depends on what I'm doing uh, at the time and where I'm feeling and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, there's all so much you can explore in regards to connection practices. It can just be about being with each other, not even in a sexual context, just being with each other. Go to a place and be with each other. Just be with each other. And another one could be you are sitting across from each other and you just do what's called eye gazing. And eye gazing is where you look in the left eye of the other person and you just look and you do that for three minutes or however long. You just do for three minutes, see what thoughts come up, see what happens and accept it and everything like that. And then another one is uh, what I call hand on heart, hand on heart. Uh, that's a connection practice is you sit across from each other, you get their hand like this, you hold their hand there and they do, and, their hand, and then you have your hand there and you have their hand on top and you're doing that. So pretty much this is how you look like when you're doing it with the other person. The other person looks like when they're doing it to you. So you, someone's always going to have, you're going to have your hand under on your heart and then you're going to have your hand over on the other person's hand. So one hand on you and it's over like this so the person's got their hand on you and then the other hand is over the other person's hand. So you just sit there and you do that. Feel the breath of the other person. Are they breathing just very upper body? In my opinion, and this is my opinion and my suggestion, when you do this is breathe through your stomach out through the mouth and just do that for a little bit three five minutes whatever and just be with each other that can be a potent turn on another one is exploring sound because with tantra there's four breath sound touch and movement so you've done the breath we just touch on breath we just we touched on touch um, now we're going to touch on sound and just doing anything in regards to allowing each other to voice your sound and i cannot stress this enough Sound is healing. Sound can be so beautiful to release any stress and shame and trauma in the body. You can just get it out. It's just, and while you're doing that release, guess what? It's coming and bringing back pleasure, baby. Pleasure. The orgasms you can have, both men and women, both men and women, the orgasms you can have by releasing your sound or not and not squashing it is, yeah, and okay, I get it, I get it. You have to have sometimes what's called pillow biting sessions. You know, gotta keep that, 
<laughs> so I get it. You have to do the pillow body. But even if you do the pillow body, still allow yourself. Well, you know, allow yourself to actually get that sound out. Okay, whatever it is, because it's interesting. I've got my sounds. Mr. B definitely has his sounds. And Mr. J, he's not so into the sound. And that's okay too. That's okay. Everyone's in their thing. That's okay. He's not into the sound, but he does have some sounds. Uh, but he's just not into it. That's his journey. So, but in my opinion, the better you can be in it, in that space where the sound, the better. So work on that with each other, sound stuff. And also, also, this is about communication. I touched on this in another video, whatever, you know, go there. Please go there. Please. It's just communication, be able to speak your truth and who you are, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then it's touch sound, um, touch sound, touch, uh, breath, and movement. Movement. Now that's where you can learn to dance. Go, go learn dance with each other. Go learn to dance with each other. Or... Or, this is male or female, and both of them, you don't care what your gender fucking is, learn to lap dance. Learn how to do a lap dance. Dan you know, it's okay to be seen and to dance for your partner. Learn how to do a lap dance and be seen. You know, so you might be going, oh, that's so easy for you, Vanessa, you used to be a stripper, blah, blah, blah. Huh. There's a million one classes and teachers out there. There's stuff online. It, it's just like what, what. But even if it's not dancing, okay, I get it. It's not for everyone. Yoga, is yoga you can do together. Is yoga certain stuff, acrobatic yoga, whatever it is, you can do as a couple, sort of thing. But the key here, the whole key thing I'm talking about is. Being with each other, being with each other, and moving your bodies with each other, okay, and getting feeling into that whole moving your body with each other. It could be as simple as the, as the male, because I'm talking about heteronormative, heterosexual relationship here, um, coming up behind the female and um, basically going like this. You're not even dancing really. You're just rocking, well, you know, just for a couple of, you know, a minute or two, and then leaving. Just connecting like that. How, how, you know, like, you know, he's holding you. You're doing your thing. And he's just rocking you. Or he's even doing something a little like allowing you to, and this is big, allowing you, the female, to surrender against him. And just, he just holds you. Or he does this or something. Okay? Can be something as soon as that, but move together. That's how you explore sexuality. This is all actually in the act in, is exploring sexuality because it's ultimately about um, connecting. Because ultimately, to do everything else with to have the better sex, that better orgasms, more connected sex, and everything like this, you need to do all these other little things. You do really do it. All helps. And of course, I'm next final video in this series because there's quite a few. <laughs> Final video in the series, I'm going to start exploring my favorite thing because I get paid to do it, hello, <laughs> is of course uh, tantric massage and tantric rituals and stuff like that you can do with your partner and touching on linga massage and yoni massage and stuff like that. I'm not going to actually go through the whole how to do it. Uh, that could be for another video another day. It's probably in my playlist. Otherwise, if it's not in my playlist, feel free to contact me. I can send you to people and places that can online as well as in person you can go learn this sort of stuff um, but nonetheless i'm going to conclude this here because i've given you a lot in this uh short video okay not so short <laughs> not so short but i uh, in this video i've given you a lot for what to work with to help you explore sexuality within a monogamous relationship okay when that's just you and the other partner and if you feel drawn to work with me, because I only work with individuals, I do not work with couples per se in the same room, I like to work with you guys as individuals because you are always, first and foremost, an individual, okay? You're on your own journey, the other person's on their own journey, 
and all it is my role is to give you the tools and stuff and help you know what you want and require and need now that's the last thing I'm going to step touch on in the last video short little process exercise ritual whatever that I love to do with all my clients and I will touch on that as well as a few other things and conclude this whole series of exploring sexuality within a monogamous relationship so once again if you feel drawn to connect with me please do pet love beers on all the socials pet love beers on Facebook Instagram Twitter Periscope snapchat pet love beers just that's it all you need to search for and you'll find me and you'll connect with me I would love to invite you to connect with me and if you feel drawn to work with me, I do do in-person sessions, as I've mentioned before in other videos in this one, here on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. But at the same time, I do do online consultations and such, um, yeah, via Zoom. But if you, if none of those draw you and you just want to connect, I welcome it. I welcome you. Thank you. And thank you. Seriously. So blessings to you. Mwah. I love you. I see you and I love you. And I'll... Yeah, hopefully see you around in other videos and you and stuff. Yeah? Yeah. Alright. Mwah. Mwah. Blessings.